Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let's worship God tonight. Amen. Welcome out to the Potter's House Christian Church tonight. We're going to stand to our meeting, glorifying Jesus. Amen. You're watching online. Let's glorify God together tonight. Amen. Let's sing out these songs tonight. Here we go. Amen. Wednesday night in service. Here we go.
He is faithful to those who revere, love him, and honor him. And tonight, by honoring God, it means that we bring uh, not only reverence to God, worship and honor to God, but it also means we bring faith tonight. Have you brought your faith? Whether you're here tonight or watching online, listen, faith is the answer, my friend. Not our intellect, not our knowledge. We can quote scripture all day long, but we don't have the faith to believe it. Nothing can take place. Do you have faith in that God can change the course of your life, can change your financial situation, can move upon you, breathe his breath, amen, and bring miracles and supernatural, amen, breakthrough tonight. I believe tonight I encourage you to do the same for salvation. As usual, let's pray. For Lopez Hernandez family here, Chavez family, Albert family, Martinez and Ball family, Casas and Eve family, maybe you have family members, friends, loved ones uh, who are not saved right now. During this time of this pandemic, uh, these riots and protests, uh, we see our world going into darker, darker days. Uh, let's pray for those who are not saved right now. What if the Lord comes, uh, amen, at any moment? Listen, uh, we're seeing clear signs that Jesus spoke on. Pray for them, amen. Um, we have the opportunity to witness to them and show the love of Jesus. Do so without hesitation tonight. Uh, this is we'll lift them up before God in prayer for healing them. Gabriela, amen. Sule's dad, Jose, amen. Sanaris, lift them up in prayer. Amen. He's got COVID up. Amen. And yeah, please, and he's, uh, I believe, a senior as well. So please uh, lift them up in prayer because COVID is harder for those who have underlying issues uh, and those who are up in age. Uh, lift up Maria Allensworth tonight for special needs in the house of God. Amen. They covered over the people. Amen. Who have to work. Uh, amen. During this time. Uh, they never stopped. They kept going to work. Uh, they're considered essential workers. Amen. Pray for our, 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 our law enforcement, uh, our nurses, our doctors, our firefighters, all those in the, amen, the uh, first responders uh, uh, field. Amen. Tonight. Uh, those are still working, amen, right now tonight. Lift them up. Grocery workers uh, who go under uh, underappreciated. Uh, those, amen, who deliver. All the people who are working, uh, amen, constantly, amen, just to be able to see, uh, uh, amen, uh, our nation's needs be met tonight. Uh, lift up all those who are affected by COVID, uh, medically, financially, in more ways than one tonight. Uh, financial breakthrough, God can do it, uh, amen, promotion, jobs, even in the midst of this. Uh, Amen. God can do it. Our brother testified how his wife had a three dollar raise in the midst of the pandemic. God can do it tonight. Listen, he is able and more than willing tonight. Parker family, as they travel, amen, abroad. Amen. I believe they made it there to Iowa. Amen. Sister Mariah, she lost her father a few uh, last week. So keep keep uh, keep her and her family in prayer. Those affected, amen, and that God would help them in this time of grief and mourning. They will look to Jesus. Amen. Works on the field. I want to lift up a few words here. Uh, Dwayne and Teresa Massey, they're in Waco, Texas. Amen. Our pastor there, Pastor uh, Roberta King of Tees in Springdale, Arkansas. Lift the missionary Joab and his way, uh, wife, Jane Quentin, the Quintero, Mexico, tonight. Uh, we're going to go for God in prayer this evening. Uh, I encourage you, whatever need you may have in the house of God uh, tonight, listen, if you have a need, uh, you want us to know about it, pray for it, put it on the comment section. Amen. Send it to us on a message, a private message if you like, also as well. Amen. Whatever it is, and bring it before God in prayer. Amen. Pray right there where you're watching, wherever it may be. God can meet with you tonight. I'm going to ask my brother Andrew to come up front and pray. Let's pray, church. Father, God, we come before you tonight. We lift up families, God, who are not here tonight. Lift up Paul. Lift up Ben and Stephanie. Lift up Alice. Lift up Ashanti. God, is her daughter Amelia. We lift up the Parkers who are gone, God, and traveling grace. We lift up, Father God, Sister Deanna, Lord Jesus. We ask her right now. We lift up Sister Debbie. We pray, move God continuously. Sister Christina and her family. And we ask her right now by the Spirit of God to move and do what flesh cannot do. And we pray, break through this time. Heavenly Father God, by the blood of Jesus, God. God, we cry out to you, Heavenly Father God, by the blood of Jesus. God, we pray for, uh, that you hear our prayers, God, as we cry out for our families, our friends, God. God, we pray, Heavenly Father, they turn to you in their time of need, God. God, we pray, Heavenly Father God, for the backslider to come home, God. God, may they repent, Father God, from, what, from their, their, their church astray away, God. God, we pray, Heavenly Father God, for those that need a healing, God. God, for uh, uh, Maria Allensworth, God, we pray, Heavenly Father God, that the transplant uh, 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 goes well, Father God. God, your hands are, 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 are worthy, God, of healing, Father God. God, we pray, Father God, for this nation, God. God, for uh, the, uh, the president, Heavenly Father, makes decisions unto you, Father God, in this world. God, as the, as the pastors go out and reach all four corners, God, God, we pray that people continue to see you through them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give a praise tonight. Amen.
Again, we say welcome to you tonight, uh, amen, to the Potter's House Christian Church of Dallas in Texas. We are a fellowship worldwide, amen, part of something great and big. God is moving upon the earth, 2,500 churches worldwide, amen. We've been around since the 70s, amen. God is doing something tremendous in our fellowship, uh, in our time, generation, and in this church and ministry. If you're watching, please share this live feed tonight, uh, amen. Let others get blessed with that, amen. We encourage you, amen. Let's have our seats tonight, amen. Uh, a few announcements in the house of God, simply, amen, tomorrow, uh, we have our prayer meeting as usual, amen, 7 o'clock, uh, amen, uh, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., we open the doors for uh, uh, prayer meeting, again, it's nothing of, uh, uh, amen, it's nothing but simply just the saint would come, in an hour and a half, amen, uh, and just come and pray, there's nothing to organize there, we'll just come and pray for uh, needs, amen, being met, I'm telling you, there's something special, something, amen, honorable, amen, not just to the church, uh, myself as a pastor, but to God, when the, his people would come and seek his face uh, in his house, uh, amen, you're watching online, amen, just listen, tonight, uh, uh, tonight's a rare time that we're going online tonight, amen, we're still trying to make that permanent again, and so listen tonight, tomorrow we won't go live on that until we get this online thing fixed, uh, uh, situated, but please, I encourage you, if you have any prayer requests, submit them anyways, we love to believe God. If God has tremendously blessed you, not just through this ministry, but even the prayer time, uh, you know, God has answered prayers, please let us know, amen, a few people have submitted that, how God has wanted to be answered in prayer is because the church would pray, amen, so that's tomorrow from 7.30, I'm sorry, 7 to 8.30 p.m., join us if you can here personally, amen, and if you can't, again, submit your prayer request on Friday, amen, uh, nothing going on, and then Saturday we have our fellowship, uh, amen, the, the 4th of July fellowship at the Lamarca, amen, RV park, we can have it there. We encourage you, amen, it's uh, be a blessing, amen, you can join us, amen, you're watching, you're from the area, you're more than welcome to join us for that fellowship, uh, amen, so that's going to be on Saturday, we're having a good time as people, celebrating our freedoms, amen, in America, amen, and so listen, amen, listen, there are people who, while we always want freedom, they're going to keep, uh, there, there are agents who are fighting for our freedom, uh, amen, our troops, amen, um, politicians, uh, there are people who are in, there are dark agents, amen, who are, who are trying to strip that away from us, amen. And so listen, amen, we, have, we live in a privileged country uh, where we have various freedoms, amen, that other countries do not have. And we take the time once out of the year to celebrate those freedoms tonight, uh, that fellowship. But anyways, uh, listen, you come, join us, um, amen, a great time that will be, of course, Sunday, 11 o'clock in the morning is our morning service on Sunday, then uh, 6.30 evening will be our evening service, um, amen, we will uh, continue the uh, the Mark of the Beast, amen, uh, uh, series, amen, on Sunday evening, so I encourage you, amen, come to that, uh, and God will definitely, amen, move, amen, praise the Lord, amen. that is the end of our announcements, prepare for the Lord's uh, tithes and offerings this evening, uh, one last announcement real quickly, of course, the, the, uh, the church, Daniel Fast, I, uh, we moved the dates to July 13th to August 3rd, so that's a few days to amen. Um, we encourage you, amen, listen, um, we want to, this is not an obligation, but I'm telling you there's something about when God's people not only pray, not only come together, but even fast together as a church, there are chains that break up, that God moves and honors, amen, we encourage you to join us, uh, July 13th will be that Monday, 21 days after, uh, from that will be August 3rd, uh, we're going to do a Daniel fast, um, so don't worry, we'll have a uh, uh, we'll have the, the specific, amen, of the foods, amen, uh, that uh, Daniel, amen, and uh, the Hebrews ate during the time, amen, uh, of, of that Daniel fast, amen, and so there are specific things, uh, that's what's called the Daniel fast, they ate specific things, amen, they were eating, they were not eating, so listen, I, I, I encourage you, join us, don't look at it as a man, I can't eat this or that, uh, if you look at it that way, you're already defeating yourself, uh, but look at it as a time to say, you know what, God, I want more of you. I want to deepen my walk. This is a time to crucify my flesh, my desires. I want to. I want to. I want to invite good habits into my life. Amen. You never know. You can even invite a good, healthy diet into your life as well. Amen. So we we sometimes often take up. Amen. For granted, what has been given to us here in America. Amen. And so many countries again, they don't have all these free restaurants and buffets. Amen. Like we do here in America. But we want to join. I encourage you. This is not a diet program. This is simply, amen. Wanted to fast, get closer to God. Believe in God for revival in the midst of the pandemic. So July 13th to the August 3rd, 21 days of Daniel fast. Now, let's move on. Tithes and offering tonight. If you're watching online, you can give online through the cash app. The cash tag is dollar sign PHC Galveston. Dollar sign PHC Galveston. You can give it to the cash app. 
You know what the Cash App is? I encourage you on your Play Store or the Google or I'm sorry, Android or iPhone, download it there. Just the way it sounds, Cash App, you can give online, you would create an account. I'd ask you a few uh, questions when you, after you're done creating your account there. You would just simply type in this cash tag right on the screen. Uh, amen, uh, dollar sign, PHC Galveston, you can give online there. Amen, we greatly appreciate that as you're watching online tonight. Amen, so real quickly, you can turn your Bible to Mark chapter 12. Mark 12, amen, I'm going to read this article to you. It says, Valedictorian with perfect attendance since pre-K earns $430,000 in scholarships. Plans to attend RPI. Valedictorian with perfect attendance. A high school graduate in New York has a lot of, to celebrate. Not only is she her class valedictorian, but she also has never missed a day of school in her entire academic career, according to the school. Ashanti Palmer of Mount Vernon has maintained perfect attendance since preschool. That's more than 4,600 days. Wow. Amen. Palmer has received more than $430,000 in scholarships, and she plans to major in biomedical engineering in the fall at uh, re, uh, man, I'm going to kill this name. I'm going to get bothered. Some institute. Being named out of Victoria feels good because it shows that all the hard work I've put in over the years has paid off. It's her speaking. And that effort is being celebrated in a big way. In terms of my perfect attendance, it wasn't something that I sought out. I knew that showing up to school every day was important because even missing one day can set you back. This is what she's saying now. A high schooler. It wasn't until 10th grade that I realized I hadn't missed a day, and then I wanted to keep up the streak. Palmer has also been on the honor roll every semester since kindergarten. Ashanti's achievements in the Mount Vernon schools have been nothing short of remarkable. And uh, since we strive to ensure our students graduate from here to college and career ready, and Ashanti is a testament to that goal, that's the, pri the principal, I believe, speaking. Uh, the seventh year says her mother and teachers were a big part of her successful school career. And I'll stop there. Here's a young lady. Think about it. She says, I knew, amen, the importance of, of coming to school every day and just missing one day could send me back. If only Christians would grasp uh, that revelation when it comes to coming to church. If only Christians would grasp, grasp that revelation when it comes, uh, amen, uh, not just coming to church, uh, amen, but coming right here in the part of, of tithes and offering uh, and bringing an offering to the things of God. For those who have been coming to church uh, and those, amen, who, uh, amen, belong to the local church, uh, amen, uh, listen to me. We knew that tonight was Wednesday. We know tonight was service, uh, that we come prepared, ready to give. Because I want to tell you something. That Jesus uh, is always here. And even though you and I can be missing, uh, amen, uh, here in the service tonight in the building, uh, or perhaps we're watching online, uh, listen, God is present at uh, every single service, uh, every single day of our lives, uh, that we come prepared tonight. Verse 41, Mark chapter 12, now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. I want to tell you something, God is always watching. Every time you and I give or don't give, every time we give, but we withheld back when the Spirit of God told us to give a certain amount, God sees what you have in your account. God sees what you hold back. God sees, amen, when we're faithful and when we're unfaithful. And many who were rich put in much. Verse 42, Mark 12, and one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which made, makes a quadrant. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Surely I see you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. But they all put in out of their abundance. But she out of her poverty put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. Amen. So all the people in there, they give. That's what they all have in common from the widow to all the rich. They give. Amen. That's what they have in common tonight. We can sit here and talk about, you know what, uh, which is obviously obvious, uh, uh, amen, uh, and talk about how the widow gave in faith her livelihood uh, and how the rich, uh, amen, came in abundance tonight. Uh, and we can critique, amen, uh, how one, uh, listen, amen, uh, got the attention of Jesus uh, and the other one, amen, of course, uh, Jesus doesn't take the time to point out tonight uh, and all these other things. What about you tonight? Because in the story, all the people gave. You're here tonight, you're watching online. What about you? 
We can talk about how the widow gave uh, and the widow got Jesus' attention uh, and the widow perhaps uh, most likely became not only a, a member, uh, a great memorial for the Bible for us Christians to give uh, but how, amen, she became blessed in the kingdom of God. Uh, amen. Listen to me tonight. That's the widow's blessing. Uh, that's the widow's, uh, amen, uh, uh, you know, it's a memorial unto, amen, to Jesus. Uh, what about you tonight? Have you came prepared? Have you ready to give tonight? Because again, I can tell you about all the miracles in the Bible. I can list uh, all of them down for you, how the men of God, the women of God who gave out in faith were blessed. Amen. You can say, wow, amen, hallelujah. But listen to me tonight. I want to tell you something. That God wants to, uh, amen, for you to experience those same breakthroughs uh, financially in your life. He wants you to be blessed uh, the same way. But you have to understand something. You have to be, uh, amen, you have to understand two things. One, give. And two, amen, uh, is trust God with your finances, which is all linked together. The widow, who didn't have much, she gave what she had. And she said, God, I'm not only going to give, but I'm going to trust in you for you to make out. Amen and bless me. That's all she had. That's all she had uh, out of her livelihood. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, and she had nothing else to go back to. She had no 401k. She had no retirement plan. She gave all that she had, but she gave it in faith, trusting God will provide. Amen. For her life. And I guarantee you that she was taken well care of. Amen. What about you tonight? I encourage you. Here's a young high school, amen, graduate saying, you know what? I knew if I just missed the day, I'll be sent back. I want to tell you something tonight. When you don't give, you miss, I mean, you miss out on your own blessing tonight. When you miss church, you miss out on your blessing. When you don't give, you miss out on the blessing that God can have for you. So to the kingdom of God, and you'll never I'm telling you, you won't be unsatisfied tonight. It's give tonight. If you're watching online, give online. I encourage you. Cash app, amen. You can give your tithes. You can give your offering. Do so, amen. I know that some of us, amen, want to be here, but we can't for whatever reason. Listen, God, by faith, will still honor as you will give, amen, to the King of Kings, amen. Because it's all done in faith. It's all done to him. Not to me, not to the potter's house, but to Jesus tonight. Amen. Go out in faith tonight. Let's pray. Let's believe God. If God put in your heart something specific, give it tonight. Be obedient and watch God move in your life. Father God, I come before you tonight. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Jesus, I pray right now by the Holy Spirit. God, continue to pour out your spirit. Uh, God, I pray you convict the people to give a certain amount. Uh, those who are watching online, let them give tonight. God, be obedient to you, the voice of God. God, I know that you honor God. Every 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 God, every cent, every dollar that comes in, God, to the kingdom of God, it is not going to vain in your eyes. Uh, and you watch how we put the money in the treasury in the offering basket. I pray tonight. Have your way. Bless your people tonight as we give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God sees, God watches, God honors, God moves on your behalf tonight. John chapter 8 tonight, if you have your Bible, John chapter 8, verse 31. John 8, verse 31. All of us here have heard the quote, tell me, tell me who you hang around with and I will tell you who you will become. Or perhaps a similar phrasing or similar in words. Or who you hang around with. Amen. Who you hang around with. You will become. Amen? 
How many amen can uh, have heard that phrase? Uh, if you're watching online, you can type amen or give a thumbs up. Who you hang around with, you'll become. This is true because the people you most hang around with, uh, amen, you'll begin to what? Uh, adopt uh, their habits and their behaviors. Uh, amen. Those that you hang around most with, amen, friends, coworkers, families, uh, whoever you hang around with more, you'll begin to adopt their habits, their behavior, their perhaps uh, uh, their speech, how they talk, uh, their ideologies, and so forth. You don't mean for it to happen. You don't intend for that to take place, uh, but it does. Obviously, there's something about uh, being attracted to this person or individual that we continuously hang around with, uh, amen, uh, and the reason that them being uh, the most we hang around with, because we either begin to have already things in common, and then, if not, we adopt their habits and behaviors. Those for the other person, too, that we're hanging with. This quote says, a smart person surrounds himself with another smart with, uh, with other smart people. If you hang out with trash, you will be perceived as trash. You see, the more you hang out with someone, the more like them you'll become. Amen? The more you hang out with someone, uh, the more likely you'll become like them. Is this why? Because perhaps, uh, no doubt, you've heard this quote of your very own parents, your mother, your father, maybe your older brother, uncle, grandfather told you this. Be careful who you hang around with. If you hang around those boys who are trouble, those girls who are trouble, listen, you'll become just like them. And the more you hang around with someone, the more likely you'll become just like them. You are who you hang out with. Amen? Listen to this quote. It is better to be alone than to be in the wrong company. Tell me who your best friends are, and I will tell you who you are. If you run with wolves, you will learn how to howl. But if you associate with eagles, you will learn how to soar the heights. That is so true. In the Marine Corps, man, listen, I was young. Uh, I was 17 to the age of 21. Uh, and listen, amen, there was a lot of times I got peer pressured. Uh, I was following, amen, uh, uh, the older Marines in age uh, and experience. And, and I adopted some things that they adopted. They influenced me in some ways uh, that, I, man, when I left the Marine Corps, amen, I know it wasn't myself that taught me these things. Amen? But it was other Marines. And most of them weren't good things. Some of them were good. Some of them were really bad. Invited addictions to my life. It enlarged the things that shouldn't have happened. Amen. But who you come, who you hang around with, uh, you'll become. They say, according to uh, I believe some uh, philosophers, they say you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You yourself, you make up, you are the average of the five people you most spend time with. That's interesting insight. And if this is true, three out of the five people that should influence you and I should be the Trinity. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But listen to me, seriously, Christian, tonight, uh, amen, of course, we should allow the Spirit of God, uh, the Trinity, to influence us. But as Christians, we need to understand that, that we need to be around godly influence. If you're going to make it for Christ, uh, if you're going to live for Jesus, you need to be around godly influence. You cannot be just around anyone and expect, uh, amen, revival, breakthrough, and so forth tonight. There's a reason why the Bible says, do not partake uh, with unbelievers. Uh, do not fellowship with darkness. Uh, amen. Uh, listen, uh, there's a reason for that. That a lump of leaven can affect the body. Right? That the unclean can uh, affect uh, the clean. Amen. All through scripture you can read about how certain things affect you and I. We're to run away from that. We're to flee from sin and we're to flee from certain things in life. We're not to hang around with them at all. There's a reason why we make a stand on certain things. Because we understand the spiritual aspect behind certain things. We need God the influence. Those who encourage you to draw near to Christ and not the world. I'm telling you. You have worldly friends and you hang around with them all the time. You'll become worldly. You'll become a worldly Christian and the world cannot tell the difference. 
This is what my family knew from the beginning when me and my wife got saved. Uh, we made radical stands and decisions. And listen, we don't stand for that. We don't do this. We don't do this. And they knew better. They wouldn't invite us to these things because our answer was no. We put our foot down. It brought arguments into the family. It brought division at one point. It brought heated discussions. Uh, but I said, listen, no. But now I thank God for it because now family, my family respects my wife and I, my family, amen, uh, uh, not only respects it, honors it, amen, they look up to us, uh, amen, that many of the family now is going to church. Amen. And all because we're saying no. Amen. I remember when friends and family would tell me, man, I miss the old Jose. I miss the old Jose. I want him back. Well, guess what? He's dead. He's not coming back. Man. Listen, the same is true. Not just for the Christian that needs God the influence, but also for the secular world tonight. The secular world needs God the influence, man. As much as they try to run away from it, as much as they try to deny it and do their own thing, they need not just good influence, but God the influence. And the sooner you get this, the better off you'll be. So I want to preach a sermon tonight on sin, not just its influence over you and I, but also on the powerful implication that sin invites into our lives tonight. Let's read the text. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And, who sh and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered uh, him, uh, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Think of the words of Jesus saying, it's a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, excuse me, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free and be. I want to preach a sermon that I've entitled, What You Say Is What You Get Tonight. Father, God, I come before you by the grace and the mercy of God. God, you are faithful. God, you are perfect justice and righteousness. Tonight, we invite the Spirit of God. Help us to understand the powerful implication of sin tonight. It's not something to be messed with or play around with tonight. We invite the Spirit of God. Have right away. We pray order. We pray discipline, structure tonight. Revival and breakthrough. We speak life up and rebuke death and sin, God. We thank you, Jesus, for the work of the cross. And all God's people say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sin is more than... Breaking God's law. Sin presents itself in spirits. In physical and spiritual things. Amen. Sin presents itself in spirits. And it is more than physical and also spiritual things. Sin, in other words, is spiritual. What I'm trying to say tonight. It's more than just breaking a, a law or God's command. Sin is very spiritual, my friend. Jesus has given us insight in this very text. Let's talk first quickly tonight. What happens when you say yes to sin? What happens when you say yes to sin? This is my first point tonight. What happens when you say yes to sin? Listen to me tonight. It must be God, maybe for somebody here tonight or watching online. Listen, there's a reason, not only why I'm preaching this sermon, but I'm telling you the Bible goes on to say, listen, we're not to partake in fellowship Unbelievers with things of darkness is tonight. It's not saying that we can't have friends who are unbelievers. What it's saying is, listen, you ought to be really careful when you hang around with that person. Don't let them influence you. Don't be spending too much time with them. Yeah. Amen? Don't let them force you to do something you know is not right. You can love people from a distance. Man. Sometimes, honestly, truthfully, God will lead you. God will something tell you, cut off that person from your life. Because they're a danger to you. To your family, to your salvation. Amen? People that really want to hurt you don't care about you. So what happens when you say yes to sin? First of all, sin comes in many different ways. Amen? As I just said a little earlier, first and foremost, uh, sin is anything that we do sinful, breaking God's command. Sin, uh, amen, first and foremost, is anything that you and I that we do that is sinful that breaks God's command. First John chapter 3 verse 4. First John 3 verse 4 in the New Living Translation says, everyone who sins is breaking God's law for all sin is contrary to the law of God. So if you find something that is contrary to the law of God, it is sin. If the Bible says that 
That lying is a sin. Guess what? It's a sin. If the Bible says, amen, uh, homosexuality is a sin, it is a sin. If the Bible says, uh, amen, listen, uh, amen, uh, that cheating your neighbor is a sin, beating your neighbor is a sin, it's a sin. Amen. Anything that, amen, is contrary to what the word of God teaches is a sin. So that's the first and foremost. So ultimately, anything that you and I do that breaks, God, that breaks God's command is a sin. Anything that you and I do that breaks his command, it is a sin. Just like here in this world, we have laws. You break the speed limit, um, amen, guess what? You're breaking the law, right? You don't wear your seatbelt, you're breaking the law. That's breaking the law. So anything that you and I do that breaks commands, uh, God's command is a sin. That's the first thing. Sin can also come in the form of a, of a type of spirit. Sin can come in the form of a type of spirit. Uh, there, are, there are such things uh, as a spirit of lust, spirit of unrighteous anger, bitterness, uh, unforgiveness. Those are, listen to me, those are not only sins, uh, but they're types of spirits. Amen? A, a spirit of unforgiveness, a spirit of bitterness. Hello? Spirit of lust. Spirit of sexual immorality, racism uh, is not just uh, a man, something that is uh, in a certain race. Racism is a spirit. Hello? It's not just blacks who are racist. I'm sorry, whites who are racist. There's blacks. Seriously, there's yeah. blacks who are racist. There is, there's Hispanics who are racist of other Hispanics. Yeah. There are Asians who are racist of other Asians. Hello? There's even Africans who are racist of other Africans. Hatred is a spirit. And even the witchcraft. Listen to me. These are spirits, man. Sin comes in a type of spirit tonight. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians, Ephesians 2, verse 2 and 3 says this. In which you once walked, talking to us, now that we're saved, he's telling us, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. This world has a course, has a course they're walking in sin, hell, destruction. According to the prince of the power of the air, amen, that's another name for the devil, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, the devil is a spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves He's saying that we once walked in this way in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, or by nature we're children of wrath just as the other. What Paul is saying, listen, you're now saved, Christian. You're born again, but you were once walking in darkness. You were once walking the course of this world. And this world, amen, listen, is influenced by the devil. The devil is the god of this age, the Bible says, and he influences the sons of disobedience. Who are the sons of disobedience? Those who disobey God, his command, his word. Those who want nothing to do with God and are in sin. He's saying that the devil has influenced then, with many spirits, with sinful lusts, uh, amen, fulfilling uh, the desires of the flesh and of the mind, amen? That's what the devil's good at. He studies you, he looks at you, you're another victim to him. Let me see what makes this guy tick. What makes this guy work? What, what, what makes him break down? I know, opposite sex, money, career. What will keep him? Uh, the devil just looks at you and, and he asks himself a couple of questions. Uh, what keeps him away from God? What keeps him, uh, keeps him uh, away from church? Uh, what will keep him in bondage? Yeah. And he throws these things at you. Temptation. Lustful spirits. Witchcraft. Racism. Whatever it is. The Bible goes on to say, you can turn there, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 tells us that, listen, that we are facing a spiritual enemy against sin is spiritual. He says, uh, verse 12, Ephesians 6, but we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. All this protest and trying to kill cops and each other. Amen. Uh, he says, we're not wrestling against just flesh and blood. Uh, let me tell you what we're wrestling against, but against principalities, against powers, uh, against rulers of the darkness of this age, uh, against spiritual hosts of, of wickedness. Uh, amen. There's a spiritual demonic uh, activity, amen, uh, around us, amen, in this world, uh, in wickedness, in the heavenly places. Uh, in other words, there's a 
spiritual demonic of influencing and pressing people, amen, throwing laza, amen, all kinds of ungodly influence tonight. Uh, sin is spiritual. Sin, uh, amen, can come in types of spirits uh, because there's a spiritual darkness, uh, amen, that is working against uh, this world, influencing them. Hello? These are alluring spirits through the demonic by influence and it even works by the action of others. The demonic throws the Louis spirits by, the, by influence and even the actions of others. How many know that we're, we're influenced by the actions of others? The demonic works that way. If the demonic knows that the opposite sex can make you fall, they'll send a temptation that way. Christian, especially you. Mm -hmm. The demonic knows that this is your weakness or this can make you fall, they'll keep sending those things. Until that doesn't work anymore, then try to send something else, and something else, yeah. and something else, and something else. And sometimes it comes in the form of a person who is sinful. A disobedient person to God, who is a son or a daughter of disobedience, as the Bible says. And because they're the family or that we care about them, they can have an influence over us. And we've got to be careful at that point. The devil will see that as a door to, oh, now I can work. Boom. And this is why we've got to make a stand even with family, friends, whoever it may be, even a boss. I had to tell my boss, but listen, I don't, I don't, I don't lie. I don't, I don't do that. Sin also comes from the behaviors of others. So I said it's a sin that is breaking the law of God. It comes in the form of a spirit. Now a sin also comes from the behavior of others. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. So fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not even be named among you. Paul is saying, don't, don't, don't let this be you, you. Don't be this kind of Christian. I don't see how many Christians are in the house of God, sleeping with the brothers and sisters in the house. When Paul is saying, fornication and uncleanness, he said, don't let it be named among you, Christian, as it is fitting for the saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather given of thanks. For this you know. He says that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man, man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. There's that word, those words again. Therefore, Christian, do not be partakers with them. You know somebody who's bad, uh, and they're, and look, listen, we're, we're all about reaching the laws. Uh, we're all about seeing and get saved. Uh, but when you got somebody who doesn't want to, amen, uh, who, who doesn't want to do nothing, doesn't want to change, uh, wants to keep sinning, that's what the son of disobedience is, right? Yeah. For, for a parent, uh, if your child keeps disobeying you, what do you do? You keep punishing them, right? How can they re uh, receive the, the benefits and the blessings of, of a child, of, amen, uh, of, of just uh, rewards, amen, uh, but they keep being disobedient? And God is saying, listen to me, those who want to disobey God willfully, those who don't want to change, listen, amen, pray for them, love them, you can maintain a relationship, but listen, don't, don't, amen, don't be hanging around that person all the time. Don't be, amen, always going to their house because, listen to me, they're going to influence you in some way. They're going to tell you, amen, listen, it's okay, the church, amen, this and that. They're going to tell you how the church should be run. Amen. Wasn't the church all about grace and mercy? Yes. But Paul is saying, listen, as a saint, uh, don't let it be named a monkey. You should not be a fornicator. You should not be unclean. God saved you from that to be clean. Uh, God saved you, amen, so you can be a righteous, holy person, a uh, man or woman. Amen. Paul is giving us instructions on how to be a Christian. And he's saying that sin comes from the behavior of others. This verse talks about the conduct of that is sinful and displeasing to God. God said, listen, this conduct is displeasing to God. And one day shall they die in that sin because they were not willing to let it go, not willing to be obedient to God, but they remain a son or daughter of disobedience. But one day they will not enter into heaven. Their sin will have a consequence. It's displeasing to God. This verse also mentions to avoid being influenced by those who commit such actions. I'm telling you, you can pray a prayer, amen, deliver from drugs, but if you walk back into that crack house, this is what's going to happen. You'll get hooked again. Stay away from that. That's not how God works. Okay, I pray a prayer. I can go to the club. I can go to Hooters. No, 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 no. That's not how 
That's not how it works. Now you're taunting God. You're testing God. Yep. Sin is contagious and influential. Like the coronavirus. Everybody's scared, man, because it can contaminate it. Right? How it can contaminate those who are in close range. If you're not six feet apart or blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? Sin does the same. It's been doing that. And we don't, we don't even bother to think, well, to make the connections. If a virus can do that, a physical virus, what about sin today? The sin virus. Sin also comes from within us. Amen? I'll be writing these down tonight. Sin also comes from within us. We have a natural sinful state. I mentioned how sin is breaking, not only breaking God's command, the type of spirit comes from the behavior of others, but also comes from, from within us. We have a natural sinful state. Since we have a fallen nature, born into sin, as the book of Romans puts it, guess what? We have a tendency to be drawn into sin. Amen? You might not have known at the time, for some of us, that that was sin. You might have not known that certain things, amen, were unpleasing to God. But it brought some consequences. You're like, man, I should, I should have done that. But most of the time, let's be honest, most of the time we know it's a sin. Most of the time we do know. There are a few things that we don't know that the Bible talks about. But most of the time, we know that's wrong. You shouldn't be messing with no married person. You shouldn't be, amen, stealing Lying on the welfare system. Hello. I just a little white lie, Pastor. Just a little bit of more money. It's called a J-O-B. <laughs> I don't want to work. That's the problem today. Generation, don't want to work today. Sin comes from us. We have a fallen nature. And since we have a fallen nature, we want to cater to our needs, right? We want everything catered to us. I was telling another brother yesterday, listen, as Christians, we need to vote not to what caters to our race, not just to what caters to our community, but to the whole entire country. Amen? Amen? The Bible says don't just look for the interests of yourself, but for the others. I'm not going to vote on some person because they're a Salvadorian running for president. No. I don't care if you said I'll give you pupusas for life. Hey Amen. Doesn't mean I'm gonna vote for you. <laughs> you gotta look at the overall of things. We have a tendency to be drawn into sin, even by our own desires. Hey Amen. Let's be honest. Some of us we have we don't have good desires. Some of us have ungodly desires. James chapter one, verse fourteen. Listen to this. James chapter one, verse fourteen. But each one, each individual is tempted when he or she is draw, drawn away by his or her or by his or her own desires and enticed. And when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. We can be enticed and ensnared into sin by our own desires. Desires that are ungodly, desires that are uh, 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 sinful. Flash unrighteous and unholy tonight. Amen? Amen? We can be enticed by our own desires. Sin can come from within. If we don't check ourselves, man, we can start entertaining ungodly thoughts. And then it then goes from entertaining ungodly thoughts to uncommitted or committed ungodly uh, actions tonight. Listen to me. Sin, my friend, is not only breaking a law, it's not only an action. But sin is real, it's spiritual, it's alluring. In other words, it, 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 it tries to welcome you, it tries to tempt you to come to luring, and brings forth powerful implications to both your spiritual and your physical life. Amen? You want to know why? You want to know why some people are in the state that they are today, or why things are happening in their life today? Then look at the lifestyle that they're committed to. Look at the lifestyle that they're committed to, and you'll see why certain things are happening in their lives. Amen? Amen. If you're lazy, guess what? You're not going to see much things happen. The Bible talks about laziness. If you're a person of hatred, 
murder. The Bible talks about that too. Sin invites three major things in your life. There's a lot of things that it invites, but three major things I want to go over tonight that you don't want around. Number one, it invites being bound, enslaved to it. You're not just committing an unlawful action tonight. Now you're inviting to be bound by the sin. You're being enslaved to it. In our main opening text, Jesus said in verse 34, he says, most assuredly, when he says most assuredly, in other words, he's saying that I guarantee you, it's a guarantee, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Why would Jesus say that? Whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. That's very interesting. That's very, amen, uh, uh, you can do, that stands out. You see, my friend, uh, you're not just sinning, uh, you're not just sinning, so to speak, uh, amen, uh, you're inviting enslavement to your life. That's what you're doing. That's what Jesus is saying. You're inviting enslavement to your life. You're enslaving yourself to the sin. It's a spiritual enslavement. That's what sin does. That's what sin produces. That's what it does to your life. Amen. To your mind, your heart. It enslaves you. It's where you feel bound to it. It's where you can't feel that you can part ways with it. It's where you become addicted to the sin. Hello? And guess what? You find yourself not able to let go. Because uh, you're committing this sin, uh, because this sin, uh, sin invites enslavement into your hearts, into your life, uh, now you're stuck in a place uh, where you feel bound to it. Uh, you feel like you can't part ways with it. Uh, you're addicted, uh, and you feel like you can't let it go. Amen? Yeah. Because sin invites a slavery factor into your life. You didn't think about that, did you? You wonder why sometimes like, man, why can't I stop doing this? Uh, why? Because sin is a slave to you. Hey, man, uh, you become a slave to sin. Yep. Because your sin is enslaving you. It's spiritual bondage. Amen? Number two. Sin invites a struggle in your life. Amen? So not only does sin enslave you, but sin also invites a struggle in your life. The more you give it to your sin, let's give it tonight. The more you give it to your sin, the more you struggle with being set free permanently. The more you give it to it, the more you'll, be, you'll struggle to be set free permanently. Because God doesn't just set you free temporarily. He wants to set you free permanently. The more you give it to your sin, the more you'll struggle and the more you'll, you'll be, uh, and the more you'll struggle with being set free. The more you struggle, the less you'll fight back against it. You just give in. You'll give in to it again and again and again and again and again, which then you then become defeated and hopeless. What's, what's the point? Excuse me. What's the point? Because now sin has not only bounded you and chained, now it's becoming a real struggle to get out. And you're finding yourself much harder to break free from it. And therefore, you become more and more and more. You do it more and more and more, and you become defeated and hopeless. Number three, the third thing that sin invites is the more sin you commit and get enslaved to, the more chaos it brings into your life. That means more drama. That means more spiritual dire consequences, physical dire consequences. Because your sin, because, I'm sorry, because your sin, yeah, amen, uh, guess what, amen, so the more you commit sin, the more you get enslaved to it, and the more chaos it brings to your life. Because the problem is, your sin won't just stop there. Your sin, what then happens is, it will, amen, uh, your sin gets entangled with other sin, and you will, and your sin will continue, uh, you'll continue to be in your sin until it consumes you, until it entangles you with other sin, until it takes you uh, completely out. That's what happens. Your sin won't just stop at just drinking, at just lusting, at just doing drugs. Your sin will, amen, start, amen, consuming you and entangling you with other sin until it finally takes you out completely. Hello. That's why sin is so powerful. And you can't break out of it. Romans 6.23, where the wages of sin is death. In other words, sin has a payment. 
Sin has a payment, my friend, and it won't stop until you pay its payment. It's demanding payment. Sin has a payment, and it's not pretty. It will cost you a pretty penny. It will cost you your life. It will cost you your walk with Christ. It will cost you your destiny in Christ. And most of all, it will cost you your eternal destination. It can cost you relationships. Your sin can cost you friendships, your job, your finances, your children. That's how much sin can take you out. And we don't understand those things because we think it's just breaking the law. We think it's just a three little word, and it's more than that. Sin consumes to the point it doesn't stop, and it brings forth death, the Bible says. It may not come now, it may not come on the next day or the right then and there, but sooner or later, Mark my words, mark the words of Jesus. Sin will come knocking at the door and ask you for that payment sooner or later. And if you're not careful, it'll take you out. Not just physically, but even spiritually. Don't get caught up. So let's talk about secondly and finally tonight. What happens when you say no to sin? But we said what happens when you say yes to sin. So let's talk about finally what happens when you say no to sin. Come on. In our text, in verse 31 and 32, Jesus makes... An interesting statement. If you turn there, if you'd like, amen, tonight, John 31 and 32, John 8, 31 and 32, he makes this interesting statement that in verse 33, right after that, the people fail to understand what Jesus tried to communicate. Let's read verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What Jesus is telling us, uh, amen, that there is a side to sin you and I are unaware of. A spiritual side, amen, that brings powerful implications, uh, that affects your physical life, uh, that invites the very things that I just spoke a little earlier. The bondage, uh, the enslavement, uh, amen, the, the consummation of sin that brings forth death, uh, amen, uh, uh, you know what, the struggle. Jesus is saying these things. Now, we don't find those words per se, but you've got to understand, amen, that's what God is trying to communicate through his word, through his spirit, and help us interpret what he's trying to say. But like most people, we're unaware of it. We fail to recognize it. Uh, amen. Look at verse 33. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants. We have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? What they thought he was saying is like, listen, amen, we've never been a slave, ever. Our ancestors were, they were slaves, right, to Egypt. The early Israelites, they were slaves then. Uh, amen. Our ancestors also were enslaved to the Babylonians. Uh, but we're set free. We're living in our own country. They thought he meant physical enslavement. Uh, and Jesus was talking more than just that. They failed to recognize what Jesus was saying. Now, with that being said, uh, it's not enough, uh, listen to me tonight, uh, that we're good people. It's not enough, uh, amen, uh, to break from the power of sin, uh, to break, amen, from sin and statement uh, and sin bondage uh, and the struggle of sin. It's not enough uh, that you're a good person to break free from that. It's not enough uh, that you come from a good home. Uh, God bless you if you came from a godly Christian home, uh, but it's not enough. It will help you or do great things. It's not enough that we were raised in church all our lives but yet we fail to recognize spiritual truths and then not apply them to our lives. Amen. You can go to church all your life. You can uh, amen, be uh, amen, a, a leader or in a position of ministry all your life in church. Uh, but if you fail to recognize certain spiritual truths, if you don't apply God's word into your life, guess what? You're doing yourself a disservice. You cannot break from the power of sin. You cannot struggle your way out of it. You cannot defeat it. Hello. Amen. That's what we're saying tonight. Jesus is giving us the only answer to our sin problem. Jesus is giving us the answer to our sin virus, uh, to our addiction, to our bondage, uh, to our struggle, whatever it is tonight. Uh, and guess what? It's himself. Verse 31, he says, if you abide in my word, not in your good deed, not in your foundation, not in your own theories or thoughts, not in your own statements, but in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will shall make you free. If you abide in my word, is what he's saying. The answer is Jesus, his word, his truth, his, him and the foundation, the rock of all life, nothing else. Not our own intellect, not how well we dress or how well we're groomed tonight. 
God bless you, you can look good tonight, but that's not the answer. Simply saying no to sin, listen to me tonight, just simply saying no to sin won't give you the victory or freedom you're looking for. You can say no to sin all you want, but just simply recognizing and acknowledge a right and saying no to sin won't give you victory or freedom. What do you mean, Pastor? You just talked about when you say yes to sin, what about no? Well, let me explain you have to say no to sin and yes to Jesus. Yeah. You can't just say no to sin and that's it and do your own thing. That's what Jesus said. You have to abide in my word. Amen. You have to say no to sin and yes to Jesus if you want freedom to do. You might say, listen to me tonight, because if you don't, uh, if you're not that one, uh, amen, that does this, because uh, you might say no to one certain sin, but you'll say yes to another sin. Mm -hmm. Hello? You can say no to one sin, but you'll still fall and yield to another sin. Think of the rich young ruler, right? Luke 18, 18, you don't have to turn there, but think of the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler asked Jesus, how do I inherit eternal life? But God tells him, those who do the commandments, and the rich young ruler responds, I have done it since my youth. I've done the Ten Commandments. But you know what? The ten, the, you know, he failed at doing one thing. He loved money more than the master. When Jesus challenged him, hey, let go of your finances. In other words, man, listen, hey, that was falling to idolatry. Call it what you want. The rich and ruler loved money more than a master. Think of Samson. Samson was a strong judge uh, that God anointed and called him, man, to be a judge over the Israelites. Uh, amen. He can defeat the enemies of God. Uh, he was strong in strength because of Jesus and because of God's spirit. Uh, amen. He can defeat uh, the enemies of God. But guess what? Uh, even though he said uh, no to other things, he said yes to the sin of sexual morality that brought him down. Judas Iscariot can go to church uh, and say yes to church uh, all his life, uh, walking with Jesus for three years of ministry, and he still said no to greed. Greed took him out. He exchanged Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. That's what Jesus was worth to him, 30 pieces of silver. And you do the math, 30 pieces of silver isn't much. You see, on your own, you can say yes to some good things in life, but you'll still say or let me say, let me backtrack. You can say some no to certain things. You might be watching tonight. Say, I've never done drugs. That's great. You never drank alcohol. That's great. But guess what? You still fall somewhere short. You still say yes to lying, adultery, immorality, pornography. Right? Or maybe you know somebody and you condone their habit. That's still a sin. The Bible says, uh, hey man, when you uh, condone what other people are doing that are sinful, he says, you're sinning too. And for those who condone the LGBTQ, listen, we're, we love them, we pray for them, but we know that's, that's sin. Yeah. And if you just condone it, you're doing it with this service. How about you tonight? What are you saying no to, but what are you saying yes to? Hmm? You say no to lying, but you say yes to gambling. Hello? You say no to the club, but you say yes to lesson after the opposite sex. You say no to the club, but say yes to Hooters. Mm -hmm. What is it that we still allow into our lives that we cannot see freedom that Jesus speaks about in our text? He says the truth will make you free. You see, it's more than just saying no to sin. It's more than just being good or a good person tonight. As I told you, sin is not just breaking the law, it's a spirit, it's behavior, it's within us. You see, you need Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. That's the answer. So he can wash your sins away, redeem you back to himself, but in a right, restored relation with God. Every person is born into sin, every person has a fractured relation with God because of sin. But when you receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're forgiven, your sins are washed away, but he brings you in a right, restored relationship with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's what he wants with you. He wants intimacy with you, but he cannot because of sin. Jesus made a way. Made a way. The only way. That's how you become free as we read in our text. Receiving Jesus, abiding in his word. Romans 10 uh, Verse 9 and 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Listen to this. 
That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions is made into salvation by praying a prayer of, of you know, a uh, sinner's prayer, admitting that you need Jesus as your Savior. You invite God uh, into your life. Something spiritual begins to take place. You become saved. Uh, you believe to righteousness. Uh, and with the mouth you confess to salvation. Uh, entitled the sermon, what you say is what you get. If you, if you speak the words of, uh, of God, forgive me, you get salvation. Amen? If you speak the words, I reject you, Jesus. You're not just rejecting God. You're not just rejecting eternal life. You're not just rejecting an eternal uh, 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 destiny of God. You're rejecting, amen, the very thing that can save you. The very thing that can free you. The very thing that can help you and guide you. Salvation. You know what salvation means? I know we use it a lot for Christianity, but when you get down to it, you really think about it? Salvation means being saved from something, right? That's what it means. Saving you from something. And in this case, uh, God has provided salvation, uh, amen, now, not just from hell, but amen, from your dangerous, harmful sin. Your sin that ensnares you, that enslaves you, that makes you struggle, that bounds you, amen. Uh, God provides a way to save you from that, to keep you from that, to keep you safe from that. If a house was burning on fire, amen, uh, who would you call the firefighters, right, to save you, Right? Jesus is trying to save you from your dangerous, harmful sin. But you keep walking into the house of fire. And you wonder why you're getting burned. You wonder why things are happening in your life. But you're not receiving the salvation of Jesus. And staying away from that house of fire. Then Jesus says in our text, if you abide in his word, you will know the truth. That's what he said. It is a very truth that will make us free, he said. If you abide in his word, you'll know that truth. And that truth will make you free. Freedom is found in truth. Hello. Amen? Amen? Not in lies. You can never have a relationship with anybody based on lies. Hello. You want a man a relationship, a real relationship with somebody? It's found in truth. Freedom is found in truth. The truth that Jesus alone saved from sin and that his word exposes the tactics and the lies of, of the enemy. Satan, the world, and the lies of sin. And I gave you some earlier. His word exposes all of that. Everything that I mentioned here tonight that was not on my own intellect or, 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 or intelligence is all based on the word of God tonight. Amen. That's why we use scripture. You see, it's one thing I, I pray a sinner's prayer, but it's another thing that I get inside of God's word to know the truth about sin and its influential and trapping power. I can pray a prayer all day long. But it's not until I get inside of God's word and, and find out the lies of hell and sin, uh, amen, and find out the tactics, uh, amen, and find how influential it is, amen. Um, so, amen, I'm going to do everything, listen to me tonight, within my power to not just say no to sin, but to apply the very word that I'm reading, the very truth of God that can help my life, amen, that can help me, guide me, bless me, and even save my life. Amen? Amen. You want to be away from the you want to stay away from the, the enslaving and trapping power of sin? Don't just pray a prayer, beginning to get inside of his word like Jesus said, abide in my word. Read it. Apply it to your life. That will help you to recognize the not only the influential power of sin, but the enemy's tactics. Give you the sermon about the Spirit of God will save you and bless you and save your life. Amen? Amen. Get inside of his word. Right now this quarantine. I know that we can't have service every day. We never did anyway, but I know we can't come to church every day. I know we can't fast every day. That's impossible. I know we can't fellowship every day. Amen? But you know what we can do every day as a Christian? One, pray, which I encourage you to do. Amen? But two, read his word. You can do that every day. Those two things you can do every day, even in quarantine. If you're watching tonight, wherever you're watching from, you can do those two, two things every day. We are stay at home order. Can't come to church. Maybe your church is closed right now. They don't have all our services. I don't know. Two things you can do right now to strengthen your walk with Jesus. Pray every day and read every day. If you're not doing that, you're not helping yourself. Three things when you say yes to Jesus. I said three things when you say yes to your sin. I want to say three things when you say yes to Jesus. Number one, we receive deliverance. I'm closing. Bear with me tonight. We receive deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen? Deliverance that God, amen, listen to me. 
uh, is delivered where Jesus uh, says that, uh, amen, that uh, we will be made free. That's what he's talking about, right? Because sin uh, enslaves us. Sin uh, puts us in chains and, and, and bondage. Uh, Jesus brings deliverance. He makes us free. God can break any change or addiction in your life tonight. Listen to me. You're watching tonight. You're here tonight. God can break any addiction or change. Matthew 18, 18. Uh, these are common words. Uh, or not common, but we know these words tonight. The familiar words. Uh, Assuredly. In other words, I guarantee you. I say to you. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen. Listen, those are words of dominion. God says, uh, whatever you bound in the name of Jesus, Lord, I bind this. Uh, amen. This, uh, uh, you know, this, this, this spirit from my life, I cast it out. Uh, God, I bind uh, heresy. Amen. Witchcraft. Uh, immorality. Amen. I take it out. God, I pray dominion right now. Deliverance. Uh, help me, God. Listen, God will help you tonight. God can deliver your life. Deliver you tonight. God delivers according to our faith and belief. You have faith that God can deliver tonight. Amen. Whatever it is. Drugs, alcohol. I heard somebody say, man, I just love sex too much. God can help you with that. In our fellowship, there are a bunch of men who got saved from that type of spirit. It's a mindset. A little idea. Number two. We receive dominion. So we, first we receive deliverance, now we receive dominion when we say yes to Jesus. Dominion is something desperately needed in your walk with Jesus. A part of that dominion comes from discipline. Hello. God in his spirit uh, gives us dominion to say no to sin, but we also need to have some spiritual discipline in our lives. We need to stand, put our foot down. Hello. We need to say, I'm coming to church. Uh, no matter what, devil, you can throw anything against I'm coming to church. Uh, I'm going to read my word, uh, even though I don't feel like it. I'm going to pray and press through, believe for miracles, even though I don't see what I want to. So, hello. you got to have that discipline. Amen? Discipline comes from our convictions. Discipline and convictions are tied together. When you have conviction, that should invite discipline in your life. Yeah. But you got to embrace your convictions. Don't ignore them. And again, I believe that comes from abiding in God's word and truth. That's where that comes in. You want, you want to know what the right conviction? You want to know what's right and what's wrong? What's right is unrighteous? You've got to get in God's word and truth. Dominion over sin saves you from a lot of trouble. Amen? That's what held Joseph when he was enslaved in, in Egypt. He was enslaved. He was a physical slave in Egypt. But guess what? His heart, spirit, and mind was free from that because he had God in his life. Hello. Amen. You can be in a foreign country. Amen. You can be in jail. Amen. Away in execution, but your mind and spirit can be free because of Jesus. Hello. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. Amen. Number three, not only do you get delivered the minute, but you get direction tonight. Amen. When you say yes to Jesus, you don't just get eternal life, but also destiny. God has a plan for your life, man. He always has had a plan for your life. I heard it in a Christian movie once. God even has plans for those, every unborn, aborted child. He does. God never meant for that to happen. But God has a plan for every, every person that's born here. You're not an accident tonight. Maybe you're a product of a rape tonight. Imagine Richard Valerian wonderfully shared his testimony, how he tried to commit suicide. He tried to fill his life with karate and all these things, but it wasn't until he found Jesus that he gave him purpose. Now he's sharing the gospel. He's a product of a rape. And he has, him and his mother have a great relationship. His mother didn't want him when he was born because it would remind him of the rape and the incident. I want to tell you something. If, you, if you're a product of a rape, God loves you. If you're a product of an affair, God still loves you and has a plan for your life. Destiny is... is God has destiny for you in life, right? And guess what? Not only does he have a destiny for you, destiny means a, a, a somewhere, somewhere where to be, somewhere to, uh, somewhere where to be, right? God's got something for you in the future, where to be and so forth. But he's also got spiritual guidance, how to get there. How to get there one day. Not just heaven, but whatever God has in store, his plan for life here, God's got guidance for you, how to get there. That means every day of your life. God not only has a final plan for your life, a, a final product per se, but God also, amen, even in the process of things, God has a plan, amen, even in the process of things of getting you there, amen? That's how intimate he's involved with you tonight. He helps and molds you every step of the way to get there, to that destiny. Just like with the children of Israel, he was there every step of the way from 
Free them from Egypt, all of the promised land. That's how God has it for you. Amen? Romans 8, last chapter tonight. Last scripture. Romans 8, verse 28. One of my favorite scriptures, verse 28. We know, and we know. Guess who knows? The Christians who confide in God. Those are the ones that know. Because anybody can read that. You know what? But only those who abide in God's word. And we know that all things work together for good. To those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. He has a purpose for you. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. That means that before the foundation of the earth, God already had a destiny before you even born. To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, among you and I, these he also called. Whom he called, he, these he also justified through his sacrifice. And whom he justified, these he also glorified through his resurrection. Amen? God has called you, predestined you, justified you through the, the work of the cross, amen, and glorified through his resurrection. Don't tell me that God has never thought about, amen, don't tell me that God doesn't love you when he thought about you way before you even came to be as an existence. God has a plan for your life tonight. And these things happen when you say yes to Jesus, amen. Back up your head bowed and I suppose to the person next to you tonight saying yes to Jesus. Amen. There's a difference between saying yes to sin and yes to Jesus. Don't just say no to sin, but say yes to Jesus tonight. You're, you're here tonight. You're watching. Praise God for watching tonight. Share this life with you tonight. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Praise God. Share it even, even after we're done here. And be alive. Upload it. Share with somebody tonight. Amen. But quickly tonight, we're here gathered together. Watching online. You're here. Listen, I talked about the power, powerful purification of sin. Sin. Amen. Maybe you're watching tonight. You thought sin was just doing something that displeases God in action. It's more than that. It's something spiritual. It brings enslavement to your mind. It brings struggle. It brings bondage. You don't want that. You can't break free from that. Your own goodness, uh, your own deeds, uh, your own strength cannot break you free from that. You wonder why, man, and why can I stop doing this? You don't want it because you're doing it on your own strength. You're doing it, uh, amen, on your own strength, and you didn't realize the powerful factor that it keeps you enslaved, uh, it keeps you bondage, uh, it brings struggle, amen, it brings chaos into your life. And the only power that can work against your sin uh, and can break you free is Jesus Christ. He said, uh, you'll abide in my word, uh, you'll be my disciples, uh, amen, and you'll be saved. Set free from the truth. The truth is that Jesus alone saves us, and you alone cannot do it. That and whoever confesses Christ as Lord and Savior shall be set free, born again, and become grafted into us, uh, to the family of God. Receive the forgiveness, receive eternal life, receive deliverance, uh, dominion, uh, strength, and that you be set free from sin tonight. God can break chains tonight. He wants to do it. Maybe you're struggling with something specific tonight. Whatever you're struggling with tonight is. Listen to me. The answer isn't trying to find the next best thing. The answer isn't trying to cope with certain uncertainties or trying to figure out things. The answer, my friend, is the truth is simply whatever you're struggling with tonight, the answer really is the, the, the thing about it, my friend, is sin. Your, battle, your real battle is with sin. You got to call it what it is. If you want freedom, you want breakthrough, you got to call it what it is sin. Don't try to justify it. It's sin tonight. You need Jesus to break you free from that sin. Before you can del receive deliverance and dominion and break and all that we're talking about tonight, you need to receive Christ who can defeat sin, who defeated sin on the cross, who defeated your sin on the cross, your situation. Whatever makes you feel powerless and hopeless tonight, there's an answer found on the cross in Jesus. You're here tonight, you never received Christ as your Savior, watching online. You're a backsetter. Listen, give your life to Jesus. It is the only thing, the only force, the only power strong enough, able enough, willing enough to set you free tonight. It's Jesus. If you pray tonight, you're here. You can raise your hand. You can come in front and pray. You're watching online. You need it. You want a miracle in your life. It's not this new drug. It's not prescriptions. It's not anything that the pharmacy can hand out or the doctors can, doctors can prescribe to you. It's Jesus Christ. He is the greatest physician that ever lived and still lives tonight. He wants to set you free tonight. You have sin in your life. You need Jesus. Pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, I come before you, asking you, come into my heart, cleanse me of all my sin and all unrighteousness. Set me free. Wash me white as snow. Become my personal Lord and Savior. 
I give you right away. My heart, my mind, and spirit are yours. Lead me to the way of everlasting. Help me to live for you. Give me spiritual guidance to your truth. Set me free, Lord Jesus. I receive all the jam from my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that prayer this evening with all your heart and sincerity. God be with you. God has forgiven you. Loves you. Bless you tonight. Now I want to encourage you. Listen tonight. You're here tonight. I want to open up the altars. Maybe this sermon has spoken to you specific things. Maybe you have addictions right now. Bondages. What you need to do. Maybe you're already, already into the Christian thing. You've already been walking with Jesus, but you still got addictions in your life. Listen, the answer, my friend, is not giving up. Not stop, uh, it's not stop coming to church. It's not stop reading. It's not stop believing. It's bringing it before God still at the, at the altar. And then right now, as we're praying at this altar call, listen, pray to Jesus. Be honest. God, help me. Whatever the addiction is, whatever it is, let God help you and strength the His Spirit to come upon you. Let the Spirit of uh, uh, let the Spirit of God come over Samson and give him strength, supernatural strength. He'll give you supernatural strength to break free from all these chains. But you gotta abide in God's word. You gotta read His word and apply it. You gotta separate yourself from, from things that make you fall. You gotta separate yourself from things, amen, that make you tempted. You gotta, amen, be close to God, His Word. That's why He said, "Abide in Me, and receive My truth." You gotta come to church. You gotta fellowship with Christians. You cannot, amen, linger around sinners and unbelievers, amen, and all that, and expect to receive break. Listen up. You gotta get close to Jesus. Bring it before God. God can set you free tonight. Now we come before you tonight, asking for your deliverance, asking for your dominion and power right now, Jesus. God, I pray, help us. Maybe we're struggling Christians tonight and we're watching online and we're struggling with something tonight that we're being real and honest about. Whatever it is, maybe sexual sin, maybe it's something that is not pleasing to you that nobody knows but only us and you, God. God, I pray, help us. We not only confess it tonight, we not only bring it to your house or to you at the altar call tonight, but we bring it to you in sincerity asking for deliverance. Help us to have dominion too, Lord God, to say no to sin. Say yes to Jesus. Surrender to your word, your will. To abide in your word. To do what you call us to do. To God, to fellowship with Christians. Fellowship with God. Study your word. Apply it, God. To fall in love with you. Not just quote the scripture. Not just simply come to church. But simply do what you've asked of us, oh God. God, help us tonight. God, I pray dominion. I pray spirit of truth and dominion over your people tonight. Those that are watching, I pray help us. Those that are yearning for you, God, to really seek you. God, help them. Bless them. Redeem them, God, I pray right now by the Spirit of God. God, you're faithful tonight. Oh, Jesus, we look up to you. Listen to real quick. I need you more. Because we need Jesus tonight. That's the answer.
Riala. Listen tonight, you're watching online, you're here, listen real quickly as I close. I want to read the scripture to you to give us victory tonight over some things in life that you and I perhaps are struggling with, things that perhaps we know we're battling with, if we're honest, but God, if we want victory tonight, you need to apply God's word. You need to listen to what it says. Galatians 5, verse 16 says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You gotta walk in the spirit, now. amen. Now, you wanna know how to walk? You gotta get inside of his word. You gotta get close to Jesus. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. In other words, the flesh desires different things in the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. The spirit desires other things in the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Amen. And so what he's saying is, listen tonight, amen. Walk in the Spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Listen, our spirit, both our flesh and our spirit hunger different things. The flesh, if we're honest, listen, our flesh desires nothing but lust, sin, hatred, me, me, me. Usually the flesh is selfish, man. All I want to do is a man not obey God. I want to do my thing. But the Spirit, right, especially as a Christian, the Spirit of God inside of us says, no, what we need is holiness, what we need is righteousness, what we need is God's truth as a foundation. If you want a family and to see it blessed, a financial breakthrough, this is what we need to follow the Bible into. The flesh is, I want to do my own thing, I want to spend my money here, I don't want to, you know, all these other things, and they battle against each other, the Bible says. What I'm trying to say tonight, listen to me, they're both hungry. And who you feed, who you feed more, is the one that will be able to lead your life more. If you feed your spirit more, then you'll walk in the spirit, and you'll be walking with Jesus. I'm not saying you won't make mistakes. I'm not saying you won't do some things. But I'm saying if you feed your spirit by getting us out of His Word, praying, fasting, all the things that we're supposed to do, you'll be walking in the spirit. But if you don't, if you feed your flesh. You don't give, you don't come to church, you don't pray, you don't read, you don't fast, you don't do anything, you're not accountable, guess what? You're going to be fulfilling your flesh and you'll be more susceptible and more prone to sin more in your life because you're not walking up or feeding your spirit, you're feeding your flesh. You're either going to feed one more than the other. Who you feed more is the one that will lead your life. If you're not careful, it can lead you to some disastrous, fatal things. If you walk in the Spirit, it'll lead you to the fruits of the Spirit, bless them, break through the night. Feed your Spirit. They're both hungry. You gotta say no to sin. You gotta say no to your flesh. This is why we fast. We have a Daniel fast coming up. Fast. Fasting is a way to crucify the flesh and invite good habits and break bad habits from our lives. We wonder why we have bad habits. And listen, break them by fasting. God will help us tonight. God wants to help. He gives you the remedy, He gives you the answer. It's in his word. If we fail to understand it or fail to look it up or fail to read it, and therefore we never know. But tonight, listen, God wants to give you breakthrough. God wants to help you. Tonight, listen, before I close, I'm going to close out in prayer, but I want to pray this prayer. If you're watching tonight, you're here tonight, I want to lead you to a prayer. Say this prayer. Say, Jesus, I come before you. I'm asking, come into my heart. Come into my life. Be the Savior of my life. Not only the Savior, but Lord of my life. That means you tell me what to do. You lead me. I'm asking you, help me to be an agent of truth and righteousness. To love your word. To love holiness and the things of God. I trust you. Help me to feed my spirit. To say no to my flesh. Crucify the flesh. To say no to sin and say yes to Jesus. God, I want to walk in the Spirit so I can live in the Spirit. I trust you wholeheartedly. In Jesus' name I pray tonight. Lord, I come before you tonight. We thank you for the service. Uh, God, I pray. Bless those who are watching tonight. Uh, we thank you for your truth. Uh, God, bring us back for the next service. We pray in Jesus' name. Uh, traveling grace and mercy. Amen tonight.